we can ensure the food security by working together in partnership. Many countries in the African continent, like South Sudan, like Sierra Leone, like, you know, this uh, Mozambique, uh, you know, this uh, uh, few other countries, they have plenty of land, but they are not being cultivated. So what we could do, if these countries provide some land to us, uh, you know, on a lease basis, then we can send our farmers, the expert farmers. And we can also provide some watering system, equipment, agriculture equipment, seeds from our north, uh, the partners of the north. So it could be south-south and north partnership. In the process, we can reduce the food deficit of that particular country. At the same time, we can reduce the global food deficit. We don't contribute. Our contribution to global warming is 0 0.045, minimum. Yet we are the seventh most vulnerable, climatically most vulnerable country. In order to save this planet Earth, what we have to do? We need to reduce, you know, the global warming in such a way so that every country comes up with aggressive uh, NDC so the global temperature remains 1.5 degrees Celsius. This is number one, all countries. Number two, that you know, uh, the development partners who agreed to provide 100 billion plus each year for a climate fund, they should, you know, come up with their commitment. Third, in our, my countries and many other climatic bands, each year, large number of people are uprooted from their homes due to erratic climatic change. In Bangladesh, each year around 650,000 people are uprooted from their traditional jobs, from their, you know, these uh, homes because of river erosion, because of global warming, and because of tidal waves and so on, and additional salinity. We are trying to help rehabilitate them, although we have been asking our Develop partners, those are the those who have abused and misused the resources, and who are the cause of their uprooting. They should help sharing the burden, but they have not come up with it. I must tell you one thing: if you travel by a flight, a plane, there are first class, there are you know business class their economy. We are a poor country, we are in the economy. But if a fire breaks out in the flight, what will happen? Whether you are a first class passenger or a business captain, does not matter. Everyone will go down. So climate issue is like that. Whether you are a developed country or I am a climate vulnerable, all will suffer in the long run unless we take corrective actions. So it is imperative that we must take corrective actions. We are making a lot of noise. In addition, the countries that are suffering due to the erratic climate changes because of the abuse and misuse of resources. We are doing an excellent job in it. Uh, you see this, we are a crowded country. Uh, we have 3,300 people per square mile. Uh, what we, and there are a lot of people are homeless, landless. So what our Prime Minister is doing, she is, has created a program known, we say Asrayon. Asrayon means shelter. Under the Asrayon program, we are providing homes to all the landless and homeless people. Everyone gets a house with little land, two units of land. One house, you see, two bedroom, plus a toilet, plus a eating area, and a baranda. Each homeless and lessless people. And along with it, they get a little land where they can do all the 
you know, the vegetables and others. When you give this, this little house to them, they feel great. They feel empowered. They feel that they can really contribute to the society. Because we, our mission is, we want our economy so, so that nobody is left behind. So this is our program. We have almost provided housing to a million, around a million people by now. And we want to give it to everyone in the country. This is a project UN Habitat can promote it to other countries. We are willing to share our expertise with other countries. So this is one area we are doing. The other thing I mentioned that each year, a large number, 650,000 people are uprooted from their homes due to climate, erratic climate change. We are also building, uh, constructing housing, thousands of housing, apartment building, to accommodate those people. Another thing we are doing, so that you know people don't crowd the cities. So we have one program, Amar Gram, Amar Shahar. We are trying to provide all the facilities that are available in the city to the villages. So the village people don't move to the city. They should stay in their own village, do whatever they're doing, and get the facilities. We have provided electricity to all the people in the country. 100% electricity. These are the city things that we provided to rural areas. We have another program, and that is uh, also known as uh, Gorefiro, means go back to home. People are coming to the cities, we want them to go back to the rural areas, roots. And you'll be happy to know, we provide a lot of incentive for you to go back to your village. We contribute to a fund, there is a Prime Minister's Fund, and whoever wants to help in this Australian program, they contribute voluntarily. It's not mandatory, it's voluntary. Over the last many years, I think our bilateral relations, although we are very close in the multilateral areas, we have same values, same, you know, so we work very closely, but in the bilateral areas, because of I must say the communication gap, it has not reached to the potential. We have our embassy here for a long time, but Kenya has not opened up their mission yet in Bangladesh. I think this is one thing they can do if they open up an embassy up there. And also airline, a direct airline, Bangladesh, Kenya, you know, it can be in between there could be other countries. That will so help people to people contact our business people to business people contact. Recently, you'll be happy to know, uh, after he came as our High Commissioner here, uh, we had a foreign office consultation. The Kenyan foreign ministry people and some business people went to Bangladesh. We are, uh, we have, since the economy is doing very well, our country is doing very well. Over the last 14 years, our GDP growth on average was 6.7%. And before the COVID, it was 8.15%, highest in the world. And economy is doing very well. It has opened up many opportunities uh, for people. We are good in pharmaceutical. We are establishing one pharmaceutical company here in Kenya. Uh, one of our private company is starting a pharmaceutical a company here because we have we have been producing state-of-the-art pharmaceuticals. We are number two in the world in the area of ready-made garments. That's our measure for rich and journal. And we can share our expertise. We can start ready-made garments here. And the beauty of ready-made garments is it creates a lot of jobs. It's a lot of jobs. If Kenyan government is interested, business people are interested, they can have partnership with our guys to s set up, you know, some ready-made garments. And uh, this is an area. We also have been uh, producing, manufacturing ships and barges. Kenya needs those. So they can also buy it from us.